I just want to throw that. Just like they're, they're even little children, just fighting to fight, just fighting to fight. It seems like today, more than anything, in the body of Christ, this division, it's really that spirit of fighting for the wrong reasons. That that spirit of just wanting to fight, just to fight. I just want to fight to fight. I just want to argue, just to argue. They did that. We had debate class where we were told we had to pick a side that we did, even if we disagreed with it, we had to pick a side and learn how to fight for it. We're just fighting to fight. That's all it is. Just fighting to fight. Arguing to argue. Arguing for argument's sake. It has nothing to do with truth. It has nothing to do with love for your brothers and sisters in Christ. It's just arguing to argue. It's just fighting to fight. Go ahead. Brothers and Christ, if you said the first part, you failed. The second part is the cure. What's the cure? Going back to saying things that God said and saying it His way. That's the cure for the disease. When they keep saying, yea, hath God said, a better rendering be. And I might be getting ahead of myself a little bit, but any time that you say things contrary to how God says things, you know what you're saying, brothers, says Christ? You're saying your way is better. You can improve on God's word. God either made a mistake, which a lot of them wouldn't dare say because then they, their true self would come, come out that, hey, I'm correcting God's word as if it's wrong. So you're either correcting God's word, because a lot of them do. They just flat out correct God's word. They're out in the open. There's no perfect written word of God. Those are the people that are the Bible perversions. They're trying to correct God. You know what the Bible believers are doing? They're falling in the trap of a better rendering would be. Oh, God said it right, but we can improve on it. God said it good, but we can say it better. You're saying God still could have done, he, he's supposed to be God, he's supposed to be perfect. You could have said it better, Lord, and I had to jump in there and I had to save you because I had to say it in a way that's better than the way you said it. And they'll always try to act like that's not how we're doing things. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. They think they're smarter than God. They can say it better than God. And I have even fell into that trap, into that disease. And God cured me of it because he said, you know what, let's start saying what the Bible says. This whole argument between Trinity and Godhead, if a lot of the brethren that I love and care about, you brothers says Christ, if you took out Trinity because you admit it's not in the Bible and you just take it out completely and only say what's in the Bible, you line up with this book in a heartbeat. Like that. And a lot of you believe, as I do, the Godhead of the King James Bible, not the real Trinity. And along with a lot of these other things, if we just lined up with the Bible, it would solve all the, the division. A lot of, not all of them, sorry. Most of the division. There's still division because you have wolves in sheep's clothing coming in purposely trying to get you away from true teachings. But a lot of the things is, I keep using the Trinity and the Godhead, <coughs> pardon me, because it's the easiest one. I've argued with people that believe 100% Godhead when I believe, but they won't let go of the title Trinity that has no basis in Scripture. They believe as I do. They, their belief, as far as the definition and the description, line up with the Godhead of the King James Bible. But like I said, they stole that definition and gave it to the title Trinity. They stole it from Godhead and gave it to the Trinity. But it's not the true definition of the Trinity. It's just trying to reason the Trinity in. And then over time, they get that definition as the true definition of Godhead out, and they slowly get you over to the definition of Trinity. Okay? But you get a lot of that out. And a lot of the vision would, would, would kind of go away almost overnight if brethren start getting back, getting saying, Lord, I want that cure. How do I cure this disease? By getting back into the Bible. Make sure you're studying the Bible. You're reading the Bible every morning, every evening. You start your day, you end your day with the Word of God. Okay? That's what you need to do. But it's like, that's what you need to do. That's the cure, lining up with the Bible. Hiding God's Word in your heart so when someone comes around and says half truth with a lie, you can point out the lie. And say, I want the whole truth. What are you lying? What are you taking away and replacing? I want what God said. When someone comes on with good words and fair speeches, they won't deceive you because you're not simple. Like I said, I tried watching a lot of those videos. I can't find any. There are no videos that I'll watch anymore when it comes to stories on the Bible, like the Old Testament stories, King David, uh, Solomon, Samuel. Uh, Moses, because they all go against the Word of God. They take out, they replace, they leave things out purposely. And even one I thought was really good, but then it was going off the Bible perversion. And it still wasn't God's Word. Okay? What do I do? I stay away from that stuff, and I just start reading God's Word. I read the stories for myself in the Old Testament. Now, I wouldn't have known that 
how do I, I kind of jumped ahead a little bit. When I first started watching some of those videos, Brother Says Christ, I watched and I said, hey, these are great. These are amazing. There's a, a movie out there called Daniel. And I was like, oh, this is great. I watched it. It was a great movie, Daniel, yes. Then I started reading the story of Daniel over and over and over, listening to it, going through the Bible multiple times a year, going over that story over and over. And now when I watch it, I'm like, wait a second. He doesn't say that the third, the fourth person in the fiery furnace is like the Son of God. He doesn't say that. Uh, they left this out. That's not what really happened. That's not what he said. When God says this is what, what was said, we need to know what was actually said because it's the words that matter, not the stinking message. Because when the message doesn't line up with the word, we're to forsake that false message for God's word so then we can have the true message. All right. Now, here's where I'm going to kick some of the brethren. All right. I've kicked me. I've showed you, hey, I made these mistakes. I've said these things. I've done these things wrong. I've kicked me. I've said things wrong. And if I still slip up and say it, correct me. But remember, Brother Christ, the Bible says, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Some men, and I'll call his name out, Brian Denlear, has forgotten this. He doesn't use meekness. He uses pride, anger, bitterness. That's how he's correcting people. And he's failing the Lord. He's failing the brethren. All right? And meekness. And it's not just him. There's a lot of people. Sam Gibb gets all prideful sometimes. I've done it a couple times. Um, but we need to remember that when we're instructing somebody that we believe is wrong, we need to do it in meekness. Why? Because let's say you're really knowledgeable of the Bible. One out of ten times, you're the one that's wrong. And you need to, if you're trying to correct someone who's right, you need to have meekness so that you can realize that, hey, maybe I'm the one wrong. Okay. But it still needs to be, that's why the meekness is there, because it's a two-way road. This, this book is a double-edged sword. It cuts both ways. Okay. You can get all prideful and puffed up, and you can be the one correcting everyone when you're the one wrong. The one that's doing all the correcting, you can be wrong. You won't see it unless you do it in meekness. If you're not trying to correct in meekness and go, oh, wait a second, maybe I'm not. You guys are right, I was wrong. That's meekness. But when you start doing it in pride, and bitterness and hate. You cause more division than you do leading people to the truth when you do it that way. But what some of the mentors have to say, let's start with David Daniels. I came across one of his videos. I'll tell you about the video in a little bit, but it was a slideshow. David Daniels, three wrong ways to approach the Bible. This is David Daniels. I learned from him. Okay. Number one, take away God's word. That's never how you should approach the Bible. So then you ask them, why do you take Godhead out and, and say Trinity? Wrong, wrong way, to take away God's word. Number two, add man's words. He uses man's words a lot to the Bible. Rapture, Trinity, God in three persons. That's not in the Bible. You can hate me all you want. It's not in the Bible. Take away God's word. That's one thing. And he, uh, This is back way back when he first started. But he went to a Bible college where they already indoctrinated him, which I believe indoctrinated, and a little bit of me, with the, the yea hath God said. We can use words that aren't in the Bible, and we can do it in a way that's subtle. Okay. And I'll show you that way in just a second. But take away God's word is number one on the slide. That's one way you don't approach the Bible, by taking away God's word. You don't approach the Bible by adding to man's words. Number three, you don't approach the Bible by changing God's Word. This can be found in the PowerPoint video, W's Missing. A silent PowerPoint presentation made into, the vi made into a video. If you go to uh, Chick Publications and you say oldest to new videos, they put that tab back on again, praise God. You go to the oldest to new, I'm trying to go through all these videos again, oldest to new. So I want to see what the man was at the beginning versus how he is today. And I was going through and I found that. So it's like the 15th or 20th video. He does a lot of short videos. But he does that. He says that. And this is true, Brother Christ. He's preaching truth. Yet he's saying one thing and he's doing another. Ask him if he believes in the Trinity. Oh, yeah. Then tell him, whoa, 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 wait, wait. You just said the three wrong ways to approach the Bible is to take away God's word. Did God say Trinity? No. He said Godhead. Add man's word, you're adding man's word, Trinity, and you're changing what God's word actually says. 
Because the Godhead and the Trinity are not the same thing. And yet they're trying to say they are. But they're not. Amen. Now, my question is, and I always I put this under all of them, and this I always ask you, Brother Smith, how did you do on that test? Did you raise your hand for any of them? How would David Daniels do on that test today? How many of those things, would he, those words, would he say, yeah, this is absolute truth when they're not in the Bible? This is fundamental of the faith. This is doctrine. Yet it's not in the Bible. Okay. But I just, just, just really short things. David Daniels, like I said, he's a big proponent. These are big proponents that the King James Bible is perfect from cover to cover. Without error, without mistakes. We're not to add to it nor subtract from it. Sam Gipp, okay, and this book right here, the second answer book. The first answer book was great. I'm trying to get through these, but a lot of these the first ones were actual where the scriptures are, where this could be a contradiction, or that could be a contradiction, and it's an amazing book. This more is like a theological book where you have the Bible perversionists at the top where they're right making the Bible perversions versus like Dr. Sam Gipp, and some of these questions in here are just stupid. I'm sorry, I, I'm a Bible believer, but it's just, they're stupid. They're desperate. They're desperation because these are men that don't want the Word of God. They don't want to believe the Word of God. I, there's a few in here so far I came across that they're trying to show contradictions. That's the, the, the answer book I like. I hate the, I don't like this book in the sense of, well, they say the, the scholars this and the scholars that, and they start getting into the scholarship thing. It's like, it has nothing to do with scholars. It has to do with absolute truth. This has nothing to do with the scribes. This is more like scribes fighting each other when you get to the second book. The first book, it has to do with the enemy attacking the Word of God itself. It's a really good book. But this one, he says, the Antiochian mentality is the Bible is perfect and cannot be improved upon. This is Sam Gipp. But the Bible is perfect and cannot be improved upon. The Alexandrian mentality is the Bible is not perfect and can be improved upon. Now you ask Sam Gipp, do you believe in the Trinity? This can, this what I just put down that can be found in the Answer Book, Helping Christians Defend Their Bible, page twenty-eight. Okay. Does Sam Gipp use any of those words that we mentioned that aren't in the Bible and and says that this is found fundamentals of the faith? This is foundational. This, this is absolute truth. Yeah, he sits there and says, the Antioch Antiochian mentality is the Bible is perfect and cannot be approved on. He's improving on the Bible. So what mentality does he have? The Alexandrian mentality. The Bible is not perfect and can be improved upon. Why? And he's improving upon it by adding all these words and, and descriptions and uh, titles that aren't in the scriptures while claiming to be a Bible believer and that this word, the Bible is perfect. What is, what is that? The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. These are huge proponents for the Bible, but in these last days, that disease has gotten in. You know what's a curious for, for David Daniels, if he did fail the test? If he's, I don't doubt he's watching, but brother, I'd say stick with the book. That's the cure. Throw out things that aren't in the book. Stick with the book. Sam Gibbs, same thing. Stick with the book. Okay, Peter Ruckman. Another huge proponent that the King James Bible is God's perfect written word, and it is. But that disease, the point is, brothers and sisters, this disease has been going on for the last hundred years. It's been indoctrinated in the Bible-believing Christianity, I believe, for the last hundred years. This goes way back, like I said, 1979, and before that, where they started trying to indoctrinate this false you know, church fathers, traditions of men, getting people to say things the wrong way and getting it, making it become part of traditions of men and rudiments of the world, and they, people start getting spoiled. Sam Gip is spoiled by philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, not after Christ. David Daniels is spoiled. Peter Ruckman was spoiled. What did Peter Ruckman say? He said, many times we are not to add to this book or subtract from this book. I, one of my favorite teachings is one where he's drawing the bridge. I don't know if you guys remember that study, but he's drawing the bridge and he's going through saying this is perfect. Add, he'll, he'll quote that verse. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. David Daniels is guilty of adding on to his word. Uh, Sam Gipp has been guilty of adding to his word. Philip Newton has been guilty of adding to his word. I'm trying, like I said, what's the cure? 
line up with the book. Say things God's way. God had it right. You're perfect, Lord. This is absolute truth. I'm going to say things your way. I'm going to stop trying to go outside the Bible. I'm going to stick with the Bible. I'm going to stay in the Bible and stop going outside the Bible. But he'd always say that. Don't add to this book. Don't subtract from this book. It's perfect from cover to cover, he said. And so here it is. Why I believe the King James Bible is the Word of God videos, where he says that in it. Okay? And he has a lot of videos where he pushes it. This book is perfect. This book is perfect. It's without error. We're not to add to it. We're not to subtract from it. He attacks the Bible perversionists for thinking that they know better than God and that they can replace what God said with what man said. And is, is Peter Ruckman guilty? He would have failed the test. I'll tell you that now. He'll fail the test. And if you watch a lot of his videos right up to the point where before he, God took him home, I believe he's in heaven, before God took him home, he failed this test. When, comfort, when confronted with adding so many titles, words, and descriptions that are not found in the Word of God, i.e. Trinity, it's not in the Bible, Rapture, Millennial Kingdom, you know what his response was? I was listening to an audio, so I couldn't find it again, so please forgive me that I can't reference it right, uh, right out. But he said he was questioned in one of these old audio stu uh, video, uh, audio like cassette tapes that they put on YouTube. He said, well, there are many words we use that are not in the Bible. And he goes through and says, we use a lot of words that aren't in the Bible. Because people came up to him and said, Trinity's not in the Bible. And he goes, well, we, his, his defense of tr using Trinity was his defense of using anything that's not in the Bible. Well, there's a lot of words we don't use in the Bible. We don't, the rapture's not in the Bible. The Millennial Kingdom's not in the Bible. So his justification was, it's okay to add to God's Word. That's what he's saying. It's okay to add to God's Word. It's just when we add to God's Word, it's okay. But when the Bible perversionists mess up God's Word, they're wrong. No, it's wrong to do it, period. But there was double standards. That's what Peter Ruckman was saying. There's double standards. He says that like it justifies adding to God's Word. He does. And just... It just, it, it, I, I've taught them with the Lord because I love all these men, the brothers of Christ. They, they taught me things, good things. They helped improve my faith in the Word of God, but at the same time, I was going against, they taught me to go against the Word of God. They taught me to have faith in God's Word while going against God's Word. Mm -hmm. That's me. Mm -hmm. Double-minded man until God set me straight. How do you set, how, what's the cure? We need to stick with what God said. How would Peter Ruckman do on the test? He would have failed. Miserably. Almost everything he said there, except for Nephilim. He might have still used the word Nephilim. I don't know. I haven't seen the video yet. Um, but uh, he would have failed the test. Brought, Peter Ruckman believed in the, key, uh, the Godhead of the King James Bible, but he used Trinity and Trinity terms because that's what was popular. That's what he was taught to do. That was the traditions of the elders, the, the church fathers. Well, they have always said it this way. I'm going to say it this way. But he actually taught what the true Bible says about the Godhead, which a lot of the other you know, Bible perversionists, Trinitarians, reject his teaching on the Godhead, even though he used the word Trinity. But he'll say Godhead sometimes, but then he'll say Trinity. Now, 33rd book. I'm hitting everyone up. 33rd book. When asked why one of his old videos had the false title of God, Trinity, he answered... Response 1. Shortly after the video was made, a kind of awakening swept through, through internet Christianity where a lot of us suddenly came to that conclusion. Talking about, because he said that it's the Godhead. It's not awakening. It's the fact that we're trying to get back to the truth. And, we're, and God showed us the truth. We, I guess you'd call it awakening, but it's more people having a love of the truth and they're opening up the eyes of the rest of us to have a love of the truth. And when you have a love of the truth and someone comes to you and says, Hey, brother, that sounds great, but chapter and verse on that? And you go to look at it and you have a love of the truth, you're like, that's not in there. I need to stop saying it. That's having a love of the truth. That's what gets me about all these people that I said they're spoiled. Sam Gibb, David Daniels. If they had a true love, 100% love of the truth, when we say chapter and verse and it's not in there, they would stop saying it and they'd stop promoting it. Period. Uh, notice I said 100% love. They have a love of the, the Word of God, but they've been poisoned. 
what the yay hath God said, that disease. Here, let's keep going. I totally want to use the same wording that is found in the King James Bible, and I realize now I would have been better off using the term Godhead. It's not the term, it's the actual title for God. He's using the word term, I just want to correct him. It's the actual title for God. I want to use what the Bible actually says, but it almost sounds like it's just, it was popular to say Trinity, so I said Trinity. Now it's popular to say Godhead, now I'm saying God. No, you need to be saying Godhead because that's what the Bible actually says. That's kind of like what he's saying, but it's, it's, it's kind of hazy whether he's saying it because it's popular or not popular versus this is absolute truth, the other one's absolute lie. I also like, I also like catching away in various other phrases. You like it or is it the absolute truth? Uh, like I said, it's just, eh. is he doing what's popular or is he standing for the truth even though it's not popular? Because when Trinity was popular, he said Trinity. Now, when Godhead's popular, he's saying Godhead. But is he saying Godhead because it's the absolute truth or because it's popular on the Internet? I had hoped that new viewers arriving here would not note the date of the video and understand my still using old terminology that a great many of us were raised with. This is why I'm reading this. Not to really attack Brother 33rd book, but to point out that he found the cure. He's not quite saying it right, I believe, but he found the cure. What's the cure? We need to say things the Bible way, not the way we were raised, the way the Bible actually says. 2017 doesn't sound that long ago, but a lot happened since then. <laughs> yeah, a lot did happen since then. But the pet with the Trinity thing, it really hit me hard that I had to start going through everything that I've, I've studied in the Bible, all the doctrines, all the teachings, and say, okay, how much of it, the wording is actually in the Bible, and how much of it are we trying to add to the Word of God? We're trying to improve on what God said. We're trying to be smarter than God. And I had to go through a lot of things and get a lot of vocabulary out of my words when it comes to saying, thus saith the Lord. You can still say rapture, but I'm not going to say there's a rapture in the Bible. There is no rapture in the Bible. It's the blessed hope. It's the day of Christ. It's the catching away. Like Brother, Brother, Brother 33rd book said here. I believe all these people are saved. They've just gotten very spoiled. Very messed up. By yea hath God said. There are about three videos on my channel where the word Trinity is used, but anything made from here on out would be going with the King James terms only. The words that are in the Bible. For this video to be given Spanish subtitles, I would hope the word Godhead would be used or the Spanish equivalent. This is 33rd book, but I remember uh, David Daniels having the same attitude. It needs to be, I was watching one of his videos, it needs to be exact equivalent. It needs to be the equivalent of what the, when you take the King James Bible and try to translate it into Spanish, it needs to be the equivalent. Yet when he put out his uh, Spanish translation, instead of doing is come in the flesh, he translated it as has come in the flesh. He did a new tra uh, Bible perversion translation. When he could have, I've talked to people, it might, not, it might have sounded a little weird, because you're not used to is come when it comes to Spanish, but it could have been done as is come in Spanish. He could have. But he chose not to. 33rd book, he, Dave Daniels used to believe it needs to be equal. It needs to line up perfectly with this book. Now it's like, oh, is come, has come, it's not that big of a deal. Spoiled. What does it do? It ruins people. When you start straying from this book, it'll ruin you. Every time. His second response. I sure hope others will read, because someone else yelled at him in the video, another video saying, hey, why are you using the word Trinity? I sure hope others will read this reply to save me having to retype this. So here goes. You'll notice that this was uploaded in the year 2017. Shortly after that, like within a few weeks, this movement to use the word Godhead instead of Trinity arose. Movement! See, I don't like that word. Because it makes me think that, that my brother in Christ is only using Godhead because it's popular. If it wasn't popular, brother, would you still be using the word Godhead and not Trinity? No, he'd still be using Trinity. The only reason he's using Godhead, I believe, is because it wasn't popular, and a part of him, and he has that love of the truth. He has a love of the truth, and it's not popular. There's two parts to it. Okay, it's not a movement. Okay, we're just getting back to the we're returning to the old paths. Remember what the Bible says, "Seek ye the old paths, the old ways." They used to say Godhead. We're not starting a new movement. It's nothing new. 
We're returning to how they used to say it in the past. They lined up with the Bible. They strayed from it. We're getting back to lining up with the Bible. There's a difference. Use the word Godhead instead of Trinity arose, and of which I totally agree. He found the cure. I totally agree. Now, as good as many of us started to distance ourselves from the usage of the word Trinity, but the video was made, already made, and I was stuck with using the word that a great many of us had been taught all our lives. Taught all our lives. Indoctrination. He's not saying it, I'm saying it. The way he says tolerant, it's indoctrination. The reason they said, a lot of the division, the reason people are standing hardcore for words that aren't in the Bible is because you were indoctrinated. You were taught to use words that aren't in the Bible your whole lives. From, from being born again to present tense day. Okay. I didn't want to remove the video and re-upload it with the correction to avoid confusion. And the brother doesn't have to. That's something I had to have grace. I had to drop a little bit of my pride and have to have grace because I used to go, why are they saying it? And I looked at the video and said, he corrected me by his video. Oh, okay. Yes, the video is old. Okay. And the newer videos, he says Godhead. That's what matters. I would watch old videos. They say Trinity. Yeah. Okay. I've been listening to a lot of audio studies of Brian Denlinger at when it was King, when it was actually the fellowship, I think Bible Believers Fellowship. He was doing the house church and street witnessing. You know, he was humble. He was meek. He had love, a strong love for God's Word, and God's Word came first. And I'm listening to a lot of his old audio studies, and he says Trinity. But, uh, but the thing is, does he say Trinity today? No. He's got that out of his vocabulary. Okay? So I'm not going to yell at, them at an old video or an old audio study and say, you need to change it and take it down. No. I can have grace and say, okay, he said that, but I know he's talking about the Godhead. Okay? Sometimes I think uh, someone who could, who's confused could come across the video and still think Trinity, but those are old videos. If they get, if they get caught up to some of his, not his newest videos, but because I won't support Born Again Barbarian, but back when it was Bible-believing, God-fearing, uh, when he was a Bible-believing, God-fearing man, uh, King James Video Ministries, you could tell once you get caught up to, to a certain point, he gets Trinity out, even condemns Trinity, and he starts saying Godhead. No, he doesn't have to take the video down. Avoid confusion with people that may have bookmarked this spot and various other reasons. I have hope. I was hoping people would realize the age of the video. And that's what he corrected me. This wasn't me making any of these responses, though. But I do say that sometimes. I'll watch old studies that brethren have done, and they'll say Trinity, and I'm talking with the Lord as he's talking, and I'll correct him right there. And then I got reminded, wait a minute, how old is this video? Okay, I remember he came to the knowledge of the truth a few years later, or a year later, or a few months later, whatever. He came to the knowledge of the truth, and now he says it the right way. Age of the video and would merely glance over that, but never fear. Anytime I relate this teaching, I, I now use the word Godhead. Praise God. And I don't just use the word to avoid disagreements. I am now convinced that the word Trinity is indeed wrong. Stop right there, brothers of Christ. What's the cure? This right here. The cure to that disease, yea, hath God said, is to actually say, you know what? I'm only going to say it the way God said it. And when you start saying things the way God said it, you start realizing all these other ways that you used to say it. They're not only wrong because it's not in the Bible, but they're wrong, period, because they go against the Bible. They go against it. Right. So there it is. Hopefully people will see this. I did, brother. I did see it. Now, be careful. Like I said, I'm reading there for that brother and all the other brethren. Be careful. It's not a movement. We're not starting something new. We're returning to the old past, the old ways. That's important. The old past, the old ways. We're getting back to saying it the way it was supposed to be said, the way Paul said it, the way it was said at the beginning. That's what we're doing. We're getting back to saying it the right way. It's not a new movement. But how will the 33rd book do on all of it? Today, he might pass. He might, I don't know. He might still be holding on to some terms and stuff that's not in the Bible. He still might be saying things the wrong way. Mm -hmm. well, uh, one more. Brian Denlinger. It's Born Again. Uh, it's, they call, he's called Born Again Barbarian. I hate that. I, and... It used to be Bible, King James Video Ministries. King James Video Ministries. It was about this. 
Now it's about that, <laughs> the world. But the ministry used to be about this. It used to be all about preaching the doctrines, preaching instruction and righteousness, word studies, subject studies, expository studies, exhorting the brethren, okay? Preaching the gospel, wanting to see people get saved. Okay? I'm not saying he doesn't want to see people get saved, but the way he's going about it, it's like taking a bat and you're beating people up and nobody's getting saved, present tense, and you're like, why isn't anybody getting saved? Because you're using a bat. This is a sword, and we're supposed to, in meekness, instruct those that oppose themselves. In meekness. We're supposed to have our feet shod with the preparation of peace. Okay? A lot of times, I don't want to go into it too much, but they try to grab, Brian does this, some other brethren do it, where they try to grab that verse in the Gospels where Jesus said, I didn't come to bring a sword, but I came to bring division. A man, a father against his son, a mother against his daughter, a uh, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, it's, it's, and the, a man's foe shall be they of his own household. I believe doctrinally that's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble. Instruction, righteousness, when we preach truth, truth divides. Truth is going to divide. I've had family turn on me where they don't really, they talk to me still, but and they're a little bit friendly, but they really don't want to hang out with me. They don't want to spend time with me. But the true impact of that verse is going to really be seen in the time of Jacob's trouble. They will turn on you. They will turn you in to have your head cut off. Okay? But he tries to grab that verse and use it, period, for today. And it's like, no, today we're supposed to be shod with the preparation of peace. If it be possible, live peaceably among all men. That's for today. And meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. Just preaching the truth is going to cause it's caused division. And preaching the truth is going to cause people to turn against you. It is. Jesus, in his day, caused people to divide. The Word today, when we stand for the Word and live a life of Christ, be a living witness, it's going to divide, absolutely. But our attitude, how we treat people, is we're supposed to have our feet shod with the preparation of peace. They might treat us like an enemy, but we're ambassadors for Jesus Christ. But his, like I said, I just, I guess with him it hurts the most because he was the biggest mentor. He turned on the Word of God. And kicked me to the curb. Kicked a lot of us to the curb. But let's get Brian Denlier. He used a lot of these words and terms not found in the Word of God. Today, he's taken a lot of them out. You got 33rd book. Uh, Brian Denlier was one that I believe he was the closest to, like, okay, I'm going to try to do everything God's way. I'm going to try to say things God's way. I'm going to do things God's way. That's not the man today. But that was the man two years ago? A year and a half, two years ago? Brother says Christ, a lot can change. People think that there still has to be a huge change before the time of Jacob's trouble can start. A lot can change in a year. God can get everything set up in a year into the time of Jacob's trouble. Just like that. A lot can change. We see that in people. We see that in the world. A lot can change. Okay. But he used to use a lot of these terms that we talked about. He doesn't anymore. Tries to get them out. He's got some pride. We, uh, all of us are fighting sometimes pride, but he's got some pride. I remember one time he used the word rapture after he said he wouldn't, and some brother, he slipped up and said it, and some brethren corrected him, because, like I said, this spirit of correction, people just love to correct, 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 and they're not doing it in meekness. They're almost doing it in pride, and a jab, aha, 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 you said that, aha, you're, you're worthless. No, but his response was, I only meant titles. I remember him saying that once, I only meant titles. No, brother, you didn't. You meant you were going to try to use the words. You failed. Just confess that you failed. Repent and say thank you for that catch. And I'm going to work harder on not using these words in the future. Okay? That, that's humbleness. But he didn't respond humble. He responded with pride. And I think that's one of his biggest failures. Is he, he's, His pride has gotten so much that he doesn't respond in meekness and humbleness. He responds with a lot of pride. And I've done it. And God's corrected me, and I'm waiting for God to correct him. But now is trying to say things God's way. Okay, He used to say things that are not found in the Bible, but now he's trying to say things God's way. Though when he fails, he gets corrected. He, does, he doesn't take it well. I'll put it in my notes. He doesn't take it well. Uh, Brothers says Christ, I learned from 33rd book and from Brian Denlier that uh, King, when it was King James Video Ministries, that when you get into ministry... And you're trying to preach truth, and they were, and they are, to a point. And they're trying to preach truth. You're going to get attacked left and right by the enemy. 
Okay, and sometimes I believe, like with Brian Denlinger, it's been blurred that he can't tell the difference between friend or foe. His pride has been, because of a pride issue, he can't tell friend from foe. He can't tell when a friend's trying to say, hey, you're not lining up with the scriptures from an enemy trying to attack him to tear him down and make him look bad. He can't tell the difference. Because of his pride. Like I said, you correct him these days. Um, how many of you guys heard that uh, joke about um, oh, I was, you hear, they make a mistake, and instead of saying, oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, they're like, oh, and I was trying for infallibility. Here I was hoping for infallibility. That's being a smart aleck. That's not taking responsibility for what mistake that they made. That's trying to cover it up. And that's when you, way back when, when I saw Brian starting to do that, I should have said something, saying, hey, that's pride, brother. Every time you make that comment, that's pride. You need to acknowledge the mistake, correct it, and move on. That's meekness. That's humbleness. The whole, I was hoping for infallibility, and he mocks it. Makes it like it's not a big deal. When I make a mistake, forgive me, brother, says Christ. If I say something wrong, or I use the wrong address, or slip up, and, you know, by all means, if you want to correct me, go ahead. If you want to have some grace and say, okay, I know he, he's trying to read it, and his eyes aren't the best, he made a mistake. There's t I've had brethren that don't correct me, that say, okay, he knows he made a mistake. Right. Then there's brethren that want to correct. Okay. If I screwed up, okay. Just remember, meekness. All right. One of the biggest things with him is uh, he's trying. He's trying very hard to do things God's way, but after a while, he took his eyes off God's word, off Jesus Christ, and he put it on the world. And that's why I get in trouble, because I say he's gotten very worldly from his vehement followers. He's gotten very worldly. Okay. He said that holiday and holy day are the same thing, and if everyone tell, anyone tells you differently, they are liars. They're liars. I'm a liar. You're a liar. If you believe that holiday and holy day are two different things. Holiday, man-made. Holy day, God-ordained. Holiday, they're satanic holidays we're to have nothing to do with, and yet holy days are God-ordained. They're in the Bible. None of these holidays, if you actually look at all the holidays, none of the holidays are actually in Scripture except for Easter. I take it back. God just corrected me as I was speaking. Easter is the only one I know of that's actually in the Scriptures. Now, a lot of these holidays can be traced back to a lot of the paganism in the Bible, the Old Testament, but they're different names. They've renamed them. They've repackaged them as something that looks innocent, but they're paganism. Okay. But holidays not in the Bible. He still fails. Brian still fails. Okay. In other words, when he says holiday and holiday are the same thing, he's saying a better rendering would be. God said holiday, but we can, we can improve on that and we can say holiday. No, we can't. No, we can't. Okay. And when I hit him up with holidays, I went through a lot of wicked, satan like pride day. That's a holiday. Holy day? Holiday? Is that a holy day? I took holiday out and said, okay, is Pride Day a holy day? Is Easter a holy day? Is East, uh, Halloween a holy day? If he, he has to say yes, holy day, holiday, they're the same thing. And if anybody tells you differently, they're liars. No, he's pride and, his, and he might have corrected himself now. He might not believe that now. Okay, he might have changed and said, okay, I, I, was, I was heated, I was you know, upset, and I said it the wrong way, and that's not what I meant. Okay, praise God. If he's back to, okay, there's holy days and there's holidays, and they're two separate things, praise God. But in his defense of Christmas, he added to God's Word a lot, and subtracted from God's Word. He ignored words in the, in the Scriptures. Okay? And we've, I've got, I'm not going to get into it too much, but Brian was the closest to being, okay, I want to do things God's, say things God's way 100%, and it didn't last long before the world got its hooks into them. Okay, we talked about this in another study. Hooks. All, you know, yea hath God said, a better rendering would be, all this, you want this in the world, it's no big deal, there's nothing wrong with this, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, now on that test up there, on that test, how would Brian Denley do? Other than the holiday and holy day, I think he'd pass the test of saying, hey, I'm going to say things God's way. But one of the things he his one of his biggest things that he's got caught doing, and he won't repent, he gets prideful and puffed up, is he'll say, I'm not adding, and he's not the only one. 
Peter Ruckman have done this. Uh, David Daniels has done this. Uh, Sam Gipp has done this. 33rd Book probably has. I don't want to be 100% on it, but I've done it. 33rd Book, I, I believe everyone's done it. Because we've, like I said, that disease has been going for over 100 years. Of yea, hath God said. We've been poisoned. It's the way we were taught how to do things. And what is it I'm talking about? Defining a word by just replacing it with another word. How many of you have seen people, have heard people do it? How many of you have accidentally done that? I have. Brian Denlinger did it big time on Christmas. He would take the word God chose, replace it with another word, and then give you the definition of the word he replaced to make him look right. I think we're all guilty of doing this. It's wrong. You never define a word by replacing it with another word. Now, defining a word in the Bible is okay. Defining a word is okay. Be not deceived with brethren or wolves in sheep's clothing with the word swamping technique. The word swamping technique. Like I said, they'll take the word that God chose, Godhead, they'll switch it with the word Trinity, and then they'll give you they'll give you the definition of Godhead, and they just replace the word with man's word, or they'll give you the definition of Trinity. But it has no basis in Scripture. God in three persons, no basis in Scripture. God the Son, no basis in Scripture. God the Holy Spirit, no basis in Scripture. All right. Three lowercase g, God the Son, God the Father, God the Son. They turn God the Father into lowercase g, God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They make up one capital G, God. Nowhere in Scripture. All right. But they swap the titles or words in the Bible, and they'll give you their definition. And that definition is either not in the Bible, or they stole the definition from another word. Rapture doesn't mean the same thing as caught up. It doesn't. I've asked brother, I challenged him, I said, hey, look it up on Webster's 1828 Dictionary. What does rapture say? Rapture says, oops, I lost it. Somehow I lost it. I had it up there. Uh, rapture says taken by violence of a pleasing nature. That's not what's going to happen. But anyway, the, the, the swamping technique. Since when is taking a word and replacing it with another word defining the first word? It's not. It's not. But it's part of deception. They take a word in the Bible and replace it with another word, then give the definition of the word they just replaced, used to replace what God actually said. When confronted, they try to act like they were just defining what God said. I, I use an example of the Trinity. They're just trying to define what God said. With Brian Denlinger, uh, Jeremiah, I think it was Jeremiah. Do I even have it in the notes? Uh, Jeremiah 10. Jeremiah 10, he took out a lot of words that God chose. He didn't actually take them out. He read them. But he took those words, replaced them with another word, and it made him look right. And a lot of brethren just bought right into it. Because they were deceived by the swamping technique. By taking the word, replacing it with another word, and then giving a definition of that word, and it makes you sound right. And it did. It made him sound right. But he was wrong, because you get back to the cure. You get back to what the Bible actually said, and you give a def You look at the definition of the words that what the Bible actually said, and they're not exactly the same as what he said. Some weren't even, even close to being the same. Okay. Gilded and adorned are not the same thing. Workmen and craftsmen are not the same thing. Workman just means physical labor. Someone who works physically. You, you can have a workman with a shovel. What does he do? He digs holes. Is that a craftsman? No. Okay. It's just someone who labors. Physical labor. Now, can a, a craftsman be a workman? Yes, but not all workmen are craftsmen. So don't switch the words out. Stick with the word that God chose. A workman is just someone who labors. Period. No, no, we've got to make it like craftsmen so we can change what's going on there. Anyway, I could go on for a while. But that's old. I need to let it go. I need to let it go. If they want the truth, you want the truth. If you don't want the truth, you don't want the truth. But you do not define a word by replacing it with another. Brian's been guilty of this. I might have been guilty of it. I know a lot of other men, great men of God out there that are guilty of this, where they've been taught that that's okay. And it's not okay. We need what's the cure. Get back to saying it God's way and defining the words that God actually chose. Stop replacing them with another word. Stop doing it. 
All these men, including me, have been guilty of this at one time or another. Satan is crafty. Be not deceived by the devil, James 4, 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Submit yourself to God. Stop saying things that Satan's way. Doctrines of devils. Stop going off and thinking that you can, you're can you smarter than God and you can correct God. Now, Brian Denler, if he took that test, he'd probably pass it almost with flying colors. But I had to throw this little clause in here, but then he would fail because even though he... He says the word that's in the Bible, he still tries to replace it sometimes with other words, mainly just with Christmas. Um, and with turning his back on the, looking for that blessed hope. Like I said, that's the only two things I really disagree with him. How he miss up, messes up true liberty in the Bible to try to justify sin. When liberty was never meant to justify sin, it was to give us hope that when we do fail God, we do sin, that we have that liberty, we can't lose our salvation, we're sealed into the day of redemption. Liberty is what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. He liberated us from the law of sin and death. Okay? I, I don't want to get into the study too much. I've got videos on the channel. You go look on liberty. Give me true liberty or give me death. Okay? And then I, I think Brian came out with one like that too. It's like, ugh. a true liberty is in Jesus Christ. We're not to get entangled with the affairs of this world who have chosen him to be a, a soldier. Our liberty has nothing to do with this world. Be careful about that. Our liberty has to do with what Jesus Christ did for us. We are in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, Brian was the one that was the closest, and then 33rd book. I, like I said, I can't, don't quote me 100% on 33rd book, but for my most, those two would probably line up pretty good with that test and almost pass the test. Um, how would you do now? Okay, we've gone here, gone through a little ways. How would you do on the test now? Would you change and go, okay, I want to say things God's way? Or are you going to be prideful and stubborn and say, I don't care, I'm going to keep saying things the way I want to say them? But Philip Newton, I have said things from time to time from past teachings from mentors. When confronted with chapter and verse, if I cannot find it in the Bible, I will repent and try to say the Bible way. But have I been guilty of saying it the world's way? Absolutely. But Lord, brother and sister Christ, it's the heart. My heart is I want to say things God's way. I want to be corrected. I don't want to be prideful and puffed up that when I get corrected and say things the world's way, I hold on to the world. You need to let, some of those teachers need to let go of the world. Their priorities are all messed up. God and His Word's not coming first. His walk with the Lord isn't coming second. And the ministry isn't coming third. The world's coming first. Which is why they can't seem to let go. I mean, choosing Christmas over the brethren, choosing God, uh, uh, Trinity... It's not even in the scriptures over the brethren. Uh, flat earth, globe earth over the brethren. And so on and so forth. All these terms, and like I said, the division. You're you holding something that's worldly. Traditions of men. Rudiments of the world. Man's wisdom. A lot of times things of this world, like Christmas, things of this world that aren't even important, more important than the word of God and fellowship with the brethren. And loving your brothers and sisters in Christ. But we're dividing over anything and everything now. Things that aren't, just give it up. Give it up for the Lord and strengthen your strengthen the Word of God in your heart and strengthen your fellowship with the brethren. The only way is to get back lined up with this for the body of Christ to start coming back together. Divisions to be, uh, for God to heal the division and bring brethren back together. We need to line up with this book. But even I have failed this test at one time. I failed the test miserably. How do I do now? I pray I pass it with flying colors. But every so often, <laughs> I have a brother or sister in Christ hit me up and say, Hey, that's nice, but where is that in the Bible? And I realize I, I, there's still always, every once in a while, there might be something that I might still slip up and keep saying that isn't in the Bible. And I'm working on it, brother or sister Christ. Please, I ask God for forgiveness first, and then I'm asking for your forgiveness. I'm trying to line up with the Bible. Right. Now there's those that just they'll, they'll they'll wait for you to make a mistake and they pounce. Right. God God will deal with those people, but my brothers and sisters in Christ that actually love me and love the ministry, pray for me. And by all means, if I do something wrong, correct me. Just remember to do it in meekness and do it with the heartfelt desire that I want to build that person back up. They just fell. They made a mistake. They fell. I want to see them get back up. The enemy, they just want to tear you down and make sure you stay down. Like I said, and I, I hate to say this again about Brian Denlinger, but that just seems like how he acts a lot. He, he tears people down to see them stay down. He wants them to stay down with his attitude. 
he used to have the attitude of meekness where he wanted to see people get back up. When people fall, he wants to see them get back up. I want that Brian back. Keep praying for him. Okay, keep praying for him. I have. I haven't stopped praying for him. I'm not going to make a million videos attacking him. God will deal with him. God knows them that are his. God will deal with me. I have to keep talking to the Lord all the time. God will deal with me as much as he's going to deal with him. I'm his servant as much as Brian Denlinger is his servant. God will deal with both of us. And God's dealing with me. Okay? He's helping me. He's correcting me. Um, I'm not proud of it. That's a big thing. I'm not proud of saying things the wrong way. I'm not proud of doing things the wrong way. Okay? I get I get fearful. When I do a study sometimes, I start thinking, of like, God, maybe God's putting it on my heart. You, I think you slipped up and said something wrong. I get fearful. And, I, and when someone goes to correct me, I get fearful. I'm like, Lord, did I make a mistake? And I listen to what the person says. I go through the scriptures, and like I said, 50-50. Usually it's like 80-20, thank God, in these last days. 80-20, 90-10. 10% of the time I make a mistake. 90% of the time I'm just being corrected by someone who doesn't want to line up with the Bible. But there's still that 10%. And I still fear that 10% if I'm there. Okay, I still fear that. I don't want to mishandle the Word of God. I don't. And that fear, I think, is what's missing from a lot of these men. Honestly, I think the fear is missing. The pride, the vanity, okay? the bitterness towards the enemy that keeps attacking them all the time, it's, and sometimes towards brethren. You can get bitterness towards brethren that turns to hate for your brothers and sisters of Christ instead of love for your brothers and sisters of Christ. But that fear of handling God's word, okay? that fear needs to be there, and it's not there. I'm trying to do better for the Lord and His people, my brothers and sisters in Christ, but I've failed. I have failed. Now, I've said this before, but I want to read it. Reemphasize. Now, every time you switch out a word, title, description that God chose, you are saying that God has either got it wrong, or you are, cough, cough, uh, just helping God out. I'm just helping God out, you know. I'm not really, because they'll deny it. they're trying to, what they're, what they're doing is they're trying to improve on what God said. That their way of saying it is better than the way God said it. And anybody that attacks me, that attacks any ministry that, that believes in the Godhead, and they vehemently, like, uh, 33, uh, not 33, look, sorry, uh, ex Catholics for Christ, they went crazy. And my question to them is, I'd ask them, do you think you're smarter than God? Because they do. Do you think you're smarter than God? The ex Catholics for Christ, both of them. Then why are you playing the yea hath God said a better rendering would be? Because you ask them chapter and verse for capital T Trinity in the Bible, they say it's there, it's there, it's doctrine, it's fundamental doctrine. And sometimes I wonder if they're actually ex-Catholics for Christ. I do. I really do. Because when they can't at least admit it's not in the scriptures whatsoever, maybe they have. Maybe they've gotten that way. But they have the attitude of... <laughs> Um, we're just, you know, we're just defining it, and we're just explaining God's Word, and we're just giving the message, and, the me and they always try to justify adding to God's Word, but every time they do, any time those ex-Catholics for Christ, any time they say Trinity, what they're saying is, yea, hath God said, a better rendering would be. God never said Trinity, but they prefer man's way. And anybody else like them that's just hardcore holding on to the Trinity is because you think you're smarter than God. You think your way of saying things and your way of doing things is better than God. You had to help God out. Or you're saying that God got it right, but you can say it better. That's another way of a better way to say it. God got it right. No, no, God's way is right. No, God had it. Yeah, God had it's good, but, but Trinity is better. That's what they're saying. Trinity is better. When they won't let go of the word Trinity, the ti a title that's not for God, nor a description for God, when they won't let go of rapture, they won't let go of... The great tribulation. They won't let go of millennial kingdom. They won't let go of these things. What they're doing is they're saying that, yeah, God, God, because I want to be considered a Bible believer. I don't want to be called. I don't want to be shown for being a fake and a fraud, or being shown that I'm turning my back on the Word of God. I was a Bible believer, but now I'm not. I don't want to be called out and shown for what I really am. So I'm not. You know, those words are great, and those are the real words, but we can improve on them. We can say it better. Improve on how God said it. Sometimes people have said it the wrong way because that is what the world knows and would, and would not understand it if, they, if we said it God's way. That's another excuse they get. Well, we say it this way so the world can understand what we're saying. 
The world's not supposed to understand what we're saying. This is a spiritually discerned book. Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women are supposed to get this book. Not the lost world, but they always try to do that. I remember Peter Ruckman. I draw with angels because that's what the world knows them as. You're not supposed to cater to the world, and you're not supposed to turn God's truth into a lie to please the world and reach the world. They want truth. They need to get saved, first and foremost. Then they would get the Godhead of the King James Bible. You need to get saved. You need to get born again. The lost world ain't going to get it. And that's the whole thing behind this. It's the message. It's the message. Because we have so many false Christians out there. False converts. That are lost. They don't get this book. They're not supposed to. They need to get truly saved and born again. So they dumb everything down to try to reach the lost. To make these lost people think they're saved. Oh, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're far from the truth. They're not getting the truth. They're far from the truth. We compromise to please the world, i.e. it's an angel with wings. P.S. The world as a whole is not supposed to understand, but when you invite lost people into your flock, these battle buildings, fellowship, you can get comp fellowship with lost world, you compromise. You start going in the wrong direction. I've seen it a lot many times again. They compromise. They compromise the gospel. They compromise the changed life after salvation. Oh, there doesn't have to be a changed life. Why? Because most of the people in the audience haven't had a changed life. Why? Because a lot of them are fakes and frauds. They're just trying to be part of a club. But we got to cater to them. we got to cater to them. we got to say things in a way that they can understand. No, no, no. So be careful about that, brother says Christ. Be very careful. 1 Corinthians 1.19 says, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Oh yeah. 1 Corinthians 3.18 Let no man deceive you. Deceive himself. I'm sorry. Let no man deceive himself. If any man, if any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, in this world, let him become a fool. It's the only way to get saved. The number one reason people won't get saved is they love their sin. And how do they defend their sin? Their own wisdom. The wisdom of this world. That's how. But they need to become a fool. Fool has said in his heart there's no God. Fool is a lost state. They have to come to the realization of their lost state to get saved. That they may be wise. Salvation. But today, men just think they're wiser than God. And we see that infiltration in the body of Christ in Bible-believing Christianity. That people just think they're wiser than God. Their way is better than God's way, starting at salvation. And their words are better than God's words. They've improved God on God's words. They've said it better. For the wisdom, verse 19, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Add thou not to his word, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it says, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. He reprove you. Brother says Christ, are you truly a Bible believer? Do you have a love of the truth? How would you do on the test? Like I said, we're going to go through and we're going to slowly start doing some series. We'll have to do some other studies in between this series. And we're going to get out all these different topics, the words that the world uses versus the word that God uses. And we're going to explain why God chose the word he did. And we're going to explain how the new words actually go against what God says. It actually goes against the Bible. All these terms and words, they actually go against the Bible. They hinder the true teaching that the Bible teaches. They mess things up. They, they, make, they turn God's word into a lie. Every last one of them. Proverbs 36. Remember this. Proverbs 36. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Because that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this series of studies. 
Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next study. Um, grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. I said, uh, because this was a long study. I thought it would be shorter intro, but I might have to break this into two parts. But brothers and Christ, we need to stick with the book. We need to stick with saying things God's way. We need the cure. What's the cure for the yea hath God said a better runner would be? Salvation is the first cure. You need to get saved. And if you are, praise God. Second cure is we need to line up with this book. We need to line up with this book and we need to say things God's way and we need to stop trying to play smarter than God. I love my brother sister Christ. I hope this has helped you and exhorted you and encouraged you to do some studies of your own to make sure that everything that you say, when you say this is what the Bible says, this is what the Bible teaches, that it's actually in there. Right? So I will see you guys in the next study.